What is going on everybody? Welcome back to Treads Barbecue. My name is Bradley Robinson and today I'm going to show you how I made these. Beautiful, delicious, smoky, tender, amazing, gigantic baby back spare ribs. That's right folks, I butchered a pig to get the full rib cage including the baby backs and the St. Louis cut all in one gigantic pork rib. Coming up! This is a pig. Pat it dry. Well, not a full pig. This is in fact the middle section of a pig. The ham or hind leg goes this way and the shoulder comes to about here and then the head. So just the best parts really. It's the rib cage, which includes the loin, the belly, the baby back ribs, the spare ribs, and a bunch of other stuff. And unfortunately this one is skin off, which means I don't get a big old skin on belly today, but that's fine. But we need to break this thing down, starting by taking out this big old chunk of kidney fat in here. This stuff is perfect for making lard. And that's the beauty of these skin off pigs is this comes out in one piece as opposed to me having to cut it out and pull it out. And we got the kidney in here too. Get that on out of there. And we're just gonna start cleaning this thing up. Been a minute since I worked on some whole hog action or most of a whole hog anyway. It's always fun though. I got this from my pig dealer. Same place Lori and Lewis gets their hogs. Peaceful pork, thank you Sloan. If you're ever in Fredericksburg, go to Dutchman's Market. That's the place that Sloan runs. And these pigs are awesome. Raised locally, just down the road. But if you don't have a pig dealer, highly recommend talking to some local farmers and ranchers because the quality is outstanding. All right, while I'm back here, I'm gonna take off the tenderloin, which is pretty easy to do. It's right along the rib cage here on the back side toward the ham and I'm just gonna slowly start peeling it out. It's one of those pieces that kind of wants to come out. Just roll it on out of there. And there we go, beautiful pork tenderloin. We can go ahead and clean this up a little bit later, take the silver skin off, get whatever side chain I missed, but yeah, beautiful cut right there. While we're at it, we'll take some of this flat meat out of here. And at this point, it should look pretty recognizable. We got your kind of baby backs right here, spare ribs right here. This is that skirt meat that's on the back of every rack of spare ribs, so we'll go ahead and take that out. Don't need that. Great for sausage, obviously. And then on the back side here, there's a big chunk of back fat, so I'm just gonna go ahead and zip that off while I'm here. Perfect for sausage making makes me happy and we'll do the same on the front we got a little piece hanging off right here I'm just kind of squaring this thing up making it look nice nice yeah. so at this point if you're still confused about what we're looking at this should be pretty clearly a nice big beautiful pork chop right here we got our pork loin right there and traditionally you would split this right down the middle giving you your baby back ribs this little curvy section here and your full spare ribs which is this side right here that breastbone is right there and then right on this fat seam is where you usually separate it to get the pork belly which is running underneath pretty much the whole way and then you can remove the loin and have your loin you could also just cut this into some bone in pork chops at this point or pretty much do whatever you want. But the first thing I'm gonna do is come down the rib cage here and find the very last bone, which is right about here. I'm just gonna zip this side off just to make it a little bit easier to work with. And ideally, I don't have to bust out the bone saw because honestly, I don't know where it is. But hopefully we can just kinda Snap that spine, and there we go. This is a beautiful piece of pork belly right there. And we've got this loin on top. So what I'll do with this piece is try to look through the viewfinder here. Just cut this down like that. And now we've got a nice beautiful piece of super thick pork belly. That'll be fun to cook. And we got this little bone in piece of pork loin. Nice big fat cap on there. I'll probably come back later, take that fat cap down a little bit. And we got ourselves a nice little roast. Ooh, maybe I'll make a porchetta. Next thing we need to do is remove the bottom belly, which looks a little bit more like belly on this side, from the ribs themselves. And I suppose you could leave it on, but we're not making bacon ribs today. And right here, there's this big piece of cartilage, which is a perfect place to start because we need to remove that anyway. So I'm just gonna kind of come in like this, following this fat seam a little bit, just pop right out on that side. Probably should bust out a bigger knife, but that'll be all right. I don't mind if we have some saw marks on this. So now at this point, I'm gonna follow this all the way through, or as far as I can. I forgot how awkward it is trying to film this kind of thing. And just stroke by stroke, oh God! Remove this top chunk. And there we go. Woo, sweaty work. And now all that's left to do is remove this big old loin meat on the back side here. So simply enough, I'm just gonna kinda go down at an angle like this and just follow it all the way down. The beauty about doing this is I can really decide how much meat I wanna leave on these bones. Not gonna lie folks, this is my first time ever doing this and it is pretty awkward. And there it is, beautiful little pork loin. Clean that up later. So at this point, 
we've got a full rib cage here. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim this side up like I normally would a rack of spares, which is find that breastplate and zip that off. Looks familiar. And then trim some of this extra top meat off. Make for some decent bacon. Now I'm gonna go through and take some of this excess fat off of the top of this, because we don't need all of that. And just like that, we have got ourselves a beautiful double rack of ribs. You can pretty clearly see the difference too. This is your baby back section, and this is just a pretty standard rack of some spare ribs. Although there is one thing that I need to do, which I forgot about, which is I need to remove this vertebrae right here because that'd be really hard to cut through with a knife once these things are cooked. So I gotta go find my bone saw. I found it immediately. Still works. Got this on Amazon. I don't know if it's intended to be a bone saw, but certainly works well. Saws all would work well too. And basically what I'm gonna do, probably at a weird camera angle, is just kind of come through and just zip this whole piece right off. Hmm, how to do this? All right, we're just gonna wing it. And the table survived. <laughs> and there we go. Beautiful big old rack of spare ribs and baby back ribs because I really just want to eat one of these center cut biggest pork ribs ever. As for a seasoning on this behemoth rack of ribs, I'm gonna go with some good old fashioned chud rub, also now at chudsbarbecue.com. But of course with ribs, you can do whatever you want. I'm gonna leave the membrane on. I'm a membrane on kind of guy. Always seems to work out well for me. And we're just gonna get a nice heavy even coating all the way around and making sure that we don't forget the sides. Beautiful. I'm gonna let this sit in it here for, I don't know, maybe five minutes. Just let that salt do some work. Go ahead and flip this guy over. And same on this side. Gotta say it does feel pretty weird seasoning a rack of ribs this big, especially if you're comparing it to like a baby back or a St. Louis cut or something. Looking good though. And that is looking pretty much perfect to me. Let's go ahead and throw it on the pit. As you can see, I already got this pit fired up because I am in fact cooking a brisket. So on we go with this giant rack of ribs. Sorry brisket, you're gonna have to scoot over a little bit. That sounds good. And we're gonna put this guy on just like that. Nice fit. You can really tell how big this rack of ribs is when you compare it to a pretty normal sized brisket like that. But anywho, we're gonna rock this pit around 275, 300 degrees and check back in in a little bit. All right, we're about four hours into this rib cook and these things are looking very nice. Got some bone pullbacks and bone pullback in the middle, which means I definitely cut a little too close to the meat, but that's all right. It's right where the baby backs meet the St. Louis cut. So very interesting, but looking nice and barky, feeling nice and smoky and tender. Rocking an internal right around 185, 190 in the 90s over here, feeling nice and tender, 200 at some spots. So I'm gonna go ahead and give these a little spritz with some hot sauce just for good measure. Add a little color, add a little bit of heat, and a little bit of that nice vinegary tang. And now I'm gonna let these cook away for another probably 30 minutes and we're gonna wrap them up. Ooh, that was hot. Ow. Very interesting bone pullback. Don't see it. It's probably why this cut doesn't exist. Anyway, I'm gonna flip these over. Undersides looking good. Beautiful color all the way around, nice and dark. And we're gonna just wrap these up. These are feeling nice and tender, probing nice and tender all the way around. So I'm just gonna let them rest in this foil, kind of steam for a little bit. And once they cool down, we'll hit them with some sauce and slice on in. All right, we are fully rested down. Ooh, -hoo -hoo. oops, oh no. Gotta say though, pretty impressive looking rack, except for those holes. Go ahead and hit this with some barbecue sauce. Oh yeah. I like saucing after the wrap sometimes. It's always nice to let it cook on, but this way you get a nice saucy rib. God, that is a loud, what are they, rattlers? Texas tree rattlers? Cicadas? I don't know. But there we have it, folks. The gigantic rack of ribs is done. Feeling nice and tender. Flip it over this way. Might as well sauce the back while we're back here. I need to go find my knife and see if we can slice into these things. All right, just gonna see how this goes. A lot of bone to navigate here. Starting with the pesky baby back side and working our way right down to the top. Smelling good, feeling pretty tender. Cartilage on this side feels a little tough. Bone fell right out of that one. <laughs> Off the bone, now that would be a cool presentation for a barbecue festival. Tomahawk baby back ribs, you don't see that. Let's see if any of these actually stayed together. Boom. Spare rib, weird little divide, <laughs> and then baby back rib. That's kinda cool. Looking nice and juicy though. All right, folks, there it is, the gigantic pork rib. We got the spare rib in all its glory, leading its way down to the baby back. And honestly, 
I didn't expect them to pull apart the way they did, but you know, I guess muscles contract, so putting two different muscles on a bone makes sense. But this is definitely the biggest pork rib I've ever seen, and I think it's time to just dive right on in. Oh, uh, mm-hmm. Oh, that was so good. Mm, that peaceful pork speaks for itself. Tender, salty, smoky. Got that chud rub on there, that Leroy and Lewis beet barbecue sauce. Keep working our way down the spare rib here. Impossibly tender. I feel like a king right now, like gnawing on a big old drumstick or something. Uh, mm, that is phenomenal. Clearly off the bone. I think I may have overcooked these a little bit. They're very tender. But let's go for this baby back, shall we? Mmm. That was so good. Not often you get such a direct comparison from spare ribs to baby backs when they're on one bone. Mm -hmm. That is an experience right there. Gnawing an entire pork bone clean. Crispy membrane. Gotta love it. There you have it. That is what a baby back meat spare rib altogether looks like. Normally it's cut like right there. Look at that thing. That's awesome. Oh, wow. Mm, mm. These are some really good ribs. I'm just gonna keep going for a minute here, folks. You're gonna have to bear with me. Mm. Now, I'm not gonna lie to you, folks. I'm a little disappointed with how these came out just because I was really picturing this big, meaty, beef rib looking giant spare rib, but the muscle fibers kind of pulled apart on me. I think I did an all right job on the butchery when it comes to the spare rib section, but the loin, I think is where I messed up. I tried to leave extra loin meat and belly meat on these, but we still ended up with some shiners, which means the bone's poking through. And I'm not sure if that's the pig or my skill because at the end of the day, I was left with a big fat cap on there and you never really see a fat cap on top of ribs, spare rib or St. Louis cut. So I figured taking that down to the meat was the right thing to do. And the spare rib looks pretty good, but these baby backs are looking pretty skimpy. So I definitely could use a little more experience butchering baby back ribs leaving more loin meat on there. But at the end of the day, these are some of the tastiest ribs I've made in a very long time. That local heritage pork is just phenomenal. The flavor is so sweet. And that simple rub with the barbecue sauce is really all you need for a good rib. And it was a fun experiment, you know? And that's what kind of backyard butchery is all about. Just trying something new because I've never seen this cut available. And I suppose if I really wanted that super meaty beef rib looking bite, all that meat on the bone, I would just go bacon rib style like they do at Leroy and Lewis. Just leave the belly on entirely. So maybe we'll do that next time. But either way, fun experiment, very tasty. And I'm definitely gonna do this again. Oh my God, it's so good. Mm. But without further ado, I think it's time for the official taste test. I mean, look how juicy and tender that is. Oh, I'm gonna just eat like all of these right now, off camera. All right, y'all, and that is it. That is how to make some absolutely fantastic full rib cage pork ribs. I highly recommend giving this one a try if you ever find this cut or if you've got a local farmer nearby that can sell you some local hog. It's always fun trying to improve your butchery skills, making new cuts, trying new things on the old barbecue pit. And at the end of the day, you're always gonna end up with some absolutely delicious meat. But all that being said, if you enjoyed this video, let me know by hitting that subscribe button, let YouTube know by dropping a like on this video. If you give this recipe a try for yourself, be sure to tag me on Instagram at Chud's Barbecue. I love to see what y'all are cooking. Big shout out to all the Patreon members. Thank you for supporting Team Chud and allowing me to keep making all these videos. And until the next time I see you, please go cook something outside. Peace.